Good afternoon. It's Manuela Seabirth. Uh, I just need to. Sorry, um, so because we are live on three different platforms, so just give me one moment. Um, Okay. Hello again. Manuela Seabirth, I'm the founder and director at Ospire Immigration Australia. I lead a team of immigration lawyers, migration agents, education agents, and migration professionals. And today we are live, and I will talk about the Dharma visa in far north Queensland because there is a lot of news. Um, I did bring a little friend today. Ta-da! <laughs> I have been advised by my marketing team to have a plant in my in my screen. So um, yes, so it will be it will be me and the plant. Um, so as usual, please give me love hearts as you're joining us. So we are Instagram, Facebook, and also on LinkedIn. Now, sorry, I'm just going to get a, a mess, get, getting a message here on LinkedIn saying they're having trouble streaming. What's the problem? Um, um, LinkedIn, is there anyone that is on LinkedIn that can let me know if... Um, can you please let me know everywhere? <laughs> can you hear me and see me? Type yes for when you can see me. And also yes for if you can hear me. Or no, of course, if you can't see or hear me. That would really help me. We have a yes. Excellent. Um, okay, so the, yeah, the yeses are coming on Facebook. I haven't gotten anyone. Um, oh, yeah, wonderful. Yes, thank you so much, Anjum Saf, Safras. Really appreciate that. Um, okay, perfect. Great. Because obviously it's very important that you can not just see me, but uh, mainly hear me. Um, and so, yeah, as you come in, please give me a like and a love heart. Actually, love hearts are better for the algorithm. So if you don't mind, um, share the love. Happy Monday. I hope you had a lovely weekend. I know it's tough times everywhere, not just in Australia and not just, you know, um, in Europe and, and all the other places. I know Asia, Africa, everywhere. It's, it's you know, people doing it tough. Um, half of the population in Australia is in lockdown. So New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia are in lockdown. Um, and there's a lot of restrictions going on at the moment in Australia, which is fairly um, new to us because in Australia we, you know, we're quite okay for a very long time um, and only the occasional lockdowns here and there. But um, yes, so... This is where we are at the moment. But with regards to immigration, there's a lot of really, really good stuff happening. Yeah, um, because Australia needs people. Yeah, Australia has a sm rather small population compared to the space that we have in Australia. And um, yeah, so there's a lot happening. Um, that's why... Yeah, I'm super excited. <laughs> I am very, very excited. Um, it's a good time to be working in the immigration space. It's a very good time to wanting to, you know, um, either migrate to Australia and I know borders are still closed. Okay, so unfortunately there's no news there just yet. But there's a lot of programs now happening um, and, and being invented for people to slowly, slowly to come in, okay? And if you have been following us and if you've been, if you've been reading our posts, then you will know about the priority skills list with 41 occupations for offshore people 
Um, you will also know about the 36 occupations that are available for especially South Australia. Um, by the way, let me know where you're from. Where are you? Where do you live? If you're in Australia, let me know the city. Um, if you're overseas, also let me know the city and the country. And keep the love hearts coming and the likes. Is there love? Oh, there's love hearts on uh, LinkedIn as well. So to my LinkedIn people, um, and as usual as well, your comments and your questions, put them in the comment box, okay? So that's very important. Because um, this is how we're communicating. Okay, wonderful. Oh, we've got someone at Alice Springs. Nice. Nice. Uh, we've got people in South Africa. We've got people in Zimbabwe. Um, Zoltan, I think. Are you in Denmark? Is that right? Denmark? Um, oh, we're getting love hearts as in comments. Um, that's wonderful. But also love hearts, um, you know, on, on Instagram, like the, there's only the love heart actually that the like. Uh, we've got people in the Philippines. Oh, Rachel, I think, uh, see, I, I have a really, really, really good memory, um, especially for like minor details, which is very good as a migration agent. Um, Rachel, I think you are Maria's sister. And Maria is in Catherine, in Northern Territory, if that is still the case. It's been a while that I have spoken with Maria. Um, I did meet Maria back in the day, like a few years ago now, uh, in Darwin. We were still able to meet people. Um, great, we've got people in Nigeria. Um, okay, wonderful, excellent, great. So I'm gonna take a big sip of water and then I'll start. And you keep liking and love hearting and put your questions in the comments and then I will answer these questions. Bali, wonderful, oh my God, I miss Bali. I've been to Bali four or five times, miss going to Bali. Um, Thailand, oh, I love Thailand as well. I love all the places. Um, Thailand, Fiji. See, I have not been to Fiji. Uh, Bula, Bula to Fiji. Okay, keep it coming. Pakistan, we've got Anjum from Pakistan. Have not been to Pakistan yet. That's on my list, definitely. definitely. Um, okay, so I am very, very excited about the updated Dharma visa in far north Queensland. So when I say far north Queensland, obviously, the, do we have any Queenslander on the, in the audience today? Any Queenslanders? I know Wayne is usually, um, well, but he is from the Gold Coast. So, so far north Queensland is in the far north. So up on the top where it's really hot. Um, it's the area like Cairns, Port Douglas, Tablelands, that sort of area, okay? So it's not for the whole of Queensland, it's just for that top bit. When I, I'm not sure why I say that, <laughs> why I do that, but it's just for um, the top end of Queensland, yeah? It's a very, very nice area. I have, I have traveled all around Australia, and um, Cairns is definitely really, really beautiful. It's very warm which I like, I like the summer and the heat. It's very, very similar to Darwin um, with regards to the climate because they're obviously um, in the tropics. So it's always nice and warm. And yes, so now they have had a Dharma agreement for a while now and in June, so four weeks ago, they had an update and I reviewed this update and it's amazing. It is so good. That's why I'm also so excited that people, the majority of people voted for this topic. Um, I mean, the other topics are great too. And I'm also very excited about the other topics. But the Dharma Far North Queensland is a real opportunity. Yeah. Um, it's a real opportunity for pretty much anyone. Okay. Because it has... 
164 occupations on the list. Okay, so Dharma, as we know, well, well, as we we here in the office and the team and migration agents and migration professionals know, Dharma is the designated area migration agreement. It is an employer sponsored visa, so that's really really important. Okay, so you can't apply for this visa unless you have an employer that sponsors you on that visa. So this is really really important to know. Um, so 164 occupations. It includes all sorts of skill levels and even occupations that are not on any of the ENSCO um, lists. Yeah. So, and I will give you examples a bit later on. Um, so, some of you may know or may not know, and I, so I will explain that from the beginning. Um, so there is different skill levels, okay? So every occupation has a skill level. So skill level one is the highest. Uh, it requires you to have a bachelor degree. Then skill level two requires you have a diploma, skill level three, four, and that usually where it finishes. But the far north Queensland Dharma, Cairns Dharma, has skill level five. And it also has, like I said, non-ENSCO occupations. So that you can't find them anywhere else. But you can find them in far north Queensland on the Dharma. And um, so it gives you a PR pathway, so pathway to permanent residency. Also, another really, really exciting feature of the far north Queensland Dharma is the age concession is up to 55 years of age. So this is super exciting because... Um, so for normal migration, most permanent visas have an age limit of 45, okay? Now, Dharma Northern Territory has a concession for age up to 50, and the Dharma in Far North Queensland has one up to 55. So for the audience um, and the people in the audience who are older, as in, you know, more mature, um, in, in their 50s, for example, that's a real opportunity. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, um, also, what's also really exciting, there's so many exciting aspects to this final of Queensland Dharma, I can't believe it. Um, but it's true. And, um, you know, when it says post qualification work experience, which means post always means after. So that means you require to first have your qualifications and then have the work experience after. Now, sometimes people either don't have qualifications, like formal qualifications, they've just worked in their field, and that is fine for certain occupations. Um, and then other times, people have some work experience, then eventually did a formal qualification and then kept working. Now, for normal immigration, yeah, only the work counts that is done past and post um, the, the qualification. For Far North Queensland, they changed it from post-qualification work experience to relevant work experience. So that means anything counts, Every, everything. Everything that you have done that is relevant to the occupation counts. And that is a game changer because so many times where we have clients who have had, you know, issues with regards to their, their work experience, especially with a post-qualification. Um, okay, so anyway, so that's exciting. What else? Oh, another exciting feature. If you have spent time on a non-DAMA 4H2 or 457 visa, you can then credit that time towards your permanent residency under the Far North Queensland Dharma. So how it works is um, the Dharma visa starts off with three years on a temporary visa, subclass 482, and then after three years you are eligible to apply for permanent residency. Now, if you've been on a visa prior to that, you can add that time towards your three years. 
So say you've been already for two years on a 4H2 visa or on a 457 visa, you can add that time towards the final of Queensland's Dharma and then that means you only need one more year instead of three, instead of, you know, instead of starting from scratch again, from start, you just start where you, where you, where you ended. Does that make sense? Um, okay. Of course, there's English language concessions available. That is another really, really, really positive advantage with Dharma visas because they give concessions for applicants, okay? So what I find sometimes clients struggle to get really high English scores in the English test and they allow a concession. Yeah, so that's good. So we have the edge concession, we have the English concession, we also have salary concessions, which is great for employers. By the way, do we have any employers in the audience today? If you are watching the replay, please also let me know in the replay by just you know posting in the comments, hashtag replay, and then um, just write employer, and then we'll, we'll make contact with you. Because um, oftentimes we have employers, they are desperate to have people working for them, especially in, in current times. We have businesses closing because they don't have staff. And then on the other hand, we have clients who are looking for employers, who are looking for work, who are looking for sponsors. So, and we are basically the middle piece, okay? So we have contacts with both. We have people who want to work and we have employers who are looking for people so we come, we bring the two together, okay? So if you are an employer, please put it in the comments and we will make contact. Or you can contact us and let us know and then we'll let you know um, what, you know, what kind of people we have on our database. Um, and then we can facilitate contact. Okay, so, um, and the way you get on our database, by the way, so if you are interested in a Dharma visa, you, like I said in the beginning, of course, you need an employer to sponsor you. You cannot apply for this visa without an employer. And like I just explained, we do have employers on our database that are looking for all sorts of workers and we can help facilitate contact between the two parties um, by making, you know, establishing the contact. At the end of the day, it's of course up to the employer to select the right person for them. Yeah, so we can't say, oh, take, you know, take that person. Um, however, you know, you can apply for that job and the fact that, you know, they're obviously looking and the fact that you are available and obviously you know, you still need to convince them that you are the, the perfect person for them. Um, but what I find with migrants, usually they are just so motivated, so, so motivated, because of course it's not just work, it's also the visa and the future in Australia. So in order to be part of the database, you need to become a client. How do you become a client? By booking a paid consultation, okay? So this is also the... the um, the process of if you want more information, okay? If you want to find out, am I eligible for the Far North Queensland Dharma? What do I need to do? Okay? Um, so the way to find that out is you need to book a paid consultation. And um, my team in the background, can you please put the links on for to book a consultation um, on the chat? That'd be, that'd be appreciated. So, yeah, so the way to find out if you are eligible for the Far North Queensland Dharma or another Dharma, because there's Dharmas in all sorts of different regions in Australia, such as Northern Territory, such as South Australia, Victoria. Um, so there's lots of different um, Dharma uh, visas available. And also there's, of course, other visas. So in the consultation, we check all the different visa options for you and you get a written summary of what we discuss and a written summary and a quote of services where you can see every, you know, all the costs listed um, for us as a migration agency as well as you know, the department fees and all the other costs that are involved. Um, 
Okay, so in order to become part of our database and in order to find out if you, you know what visas you're eligible for, you need to book a paid consultation. So that's very important. Um, today, the information is generic. Okay, I will definitely provide you and deliver a lot of value or have already and I will, will give you even more information and more value. However, it's just generic. What that means is this information is an overview. If you want to find out if you are eligible for this particular visa, that's when you have to talk to a migration agent or lawyer uh, from our team and that's where we assess your visa options. All right, great. Now, I talked about all the concessions. I talked about the, um, the amazing Dharma in front of Queensland and the, it's, it's, the, it's the, probably one of the best Dharma visas um, that, are, that are out there at the moment, that are available. Um, so I'll give you an example. As I mentioned earlier, there are different skill levels. Okay, so there's skill level one, which is the highest, two, three, four, five. Um, and so skill level one, an example is an accountant. Because you need, you need a bachelor degree, yeah, so you need to have gone to university, you need to have a bachelor degree, and accountants are on the Dharma list. Now, accountants are also, they have access to other visas, but sometimes, for example, if your English is not good enough, not, not high enough yet, um, that could be a really, really good option. Or if you are over 45, on the Dharma for North Queensland, they allow up to 55 years of age. So that is 10 years more than for other visas. Do we have any accountants in the audience today? Let me know in the comments if you're an accountant and then I'll uh, chat a bit more about accountants. Um, meanwhile, so you do that. Um, maybe also just in general, even if you're not an accountant, let me know your occupations. What do you do for work? What is your job? Just so I get a bit of an idea as to what skill levels do we have, what, what, you know, what professionals do we have, and then I can talk about more, uh, you know, a little bit more about the relevant occupations. Because there's no point of me talking about accountants if, if we don't have any accountants in the audience. See, that is, that is the advantage of being part of a life. Yeah, because if you're now an accountant and you're watching the replay, well, if you would have been on the live, then I would have talked about accountants. Um, okay, so we've got Gujinda, who is a chef. Great. We have someone else um, here. Mai Ling um, is a childcare worker. Great. Okay, I'll talk about these two. Chef, childcare worker. What else have we got? Um, Instagram, LinkedIn. Do we have any, anyone? Yeah, we have caregiver. Mm-hmm, okay. Keep the comments coming. Also, if you just joined, um, or even if you haven't done so, it would really, really, really appreciate if you give us a love heart for liking this life. Okay. How are we going for time? Um, 24 minutes, okay. We are 24 minutes live, so I try to keep it brief. Um, so my aim is always to be around the 30 minutes. Yeah, so 30 minutes is my goal, um, so that it gives me five minutes. So keep keep coming. Um, the love hearts are wonderful. I love seeing the love hearts. Also, if you think this is really valuable, for for you know your friends on Instagram and Facebook, I can't, I can't even I don't even know if you can share on. Oh yes, you can share on Instagram. Um, feel free to share this live. So hit the share button. Okay, we've got um, metal fabricator. Great. Okay, so I'll give you an example. So I haven't seen any accountants yet. So let's just not talk about accountants. Um, so skillable two following from skillable one. Skillable two is surveying technician. So pretty much any technicians. Yeah. Um, then, and this is just examples, okay? So there's 164 occupations. 
And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to read 164 occupations. <laughs> um, so um, I, this is just an example. So you see, so you get an idea. All right. Um, cabler is skill three. Yeah. So anything to do with data, communications, skillable three. Skillable four, and this is again something that really amazes me and gets me excited. Skillable four, an example for skillable four is bar attendant and waiter. So if you are working in a restaurant or cafe or bar and you, you know, serving drinks, serving food, that is a skillable four occupation. You can apply for the Dharma in front of Queensland. Hospitality has become a critical sector and there is a huge shortage and lack of hospitality workers in Australia, not just far north Queensland, everywhere. So if you are working in hospitality, and when I say hospitality, hospitality, I mean if you're working in restaurants, cafes, bars, um, you know, so that is occupations, um, bartenders, waiters, um, that is chefs, that is cooks, that is restaurant managers, cafe managers, bar managers. So anything to do with hospitality, yeah, where you're serving drinks and foods and cafe, uh, coffees um, to, to people, then that is in high demand. So make sure that you let me know in the comments. Again, put it in the comments. Put your occupation in the comments. So Gabriella um, is also a chef. And then here we have Amna is an enrolled nurse. Yep, nurses, oh my God, same here. So if you are working in the medical sector, so nurses, enrolled nurses, doctors, anything to do with medical, highly, highly regarded. And please make sure that you put it in the comments and please make sure that you make contact with us. Yeah, so when I say connect with us, contact our office because there is lots happening. Um, yes, uh, so we've got Tevita is driver, warehouse jobs delivers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that is more like a scale of four, five. Yeah, so on the lower spectrum. Um, Sultan is a forklift driver and a chef. That's great. Wonderful. Um, Zoltan, help me out. So I think you are Hungarian, but you live in Denmark. Is that right? Um, if you have just joined or if you haven't done so, let me know where you're from. It's always nice to, um, do, to see where people are from. Is there any fellow Germans online today? I'm from Germany, so always nice to see fellow Germans. See, that's what I mean. Um, I mentioned earlier, I have... Um, I have a, um, a, a really, really good memory. Um, so I've been in migration nation for nearly six years and have had the business for six years. And um, I still remember details from cases from six years ago. <laughs> um, and so anyway, so Zoltan, I remembered that. Um, and also what I said earlier about Rachel, I think Rachel is Maria's sister, um, both from the Philippines. Maria is in the Northern Territory, and Rachel, I believe, you are still offshore in the Philippines. And also, I think Rachel is a teacher. But anyways, um, that is just me, um, you know, um, filling in time so I can see more occupations. So we've got, um, I don't think we have got anything new. I can't see anything on LinkedIn. Um, that's okay. So, um... So I stopped by with Scalable 4. Now, this, this is the exciting thing about the Dharma Fund of Queensland. It includes Scalable 5 occupations, which is amazing. And an example for Scalable 5 occupations is housekeeper. Yeah, so if you, for example, work in a hotel, um, or motel, or break, uh, bed and breakfast, or you know, uh, Airbnb, not Airbnb, but you know what I mean, like if you are employed as a housekeeper. So housekeeper is skillable five. And another occupation 
for schedule five is farm worker. So if you are working on a farm, because Australia is actually quite rural, um, so it has lots of farm farming, yeah? So there's animal farming, there's crop farming, there's fruit and nuts farming. Um, there's, you know, we have lots of produce, produce, sorry, produce, that's really hard to say for me as a German with my accent, but you know what I mean. So, you know, fruit and vegetables, um, corn, crop, um, animals, beef, cattle, farms, and so on. So heaps of farming, that's what I'm saying. That's my point, farming. Do we have any, fa any farm workers or any housekeepers in the audience? They're all hardworking people, so they may be actually working at the moment and watching the recording afterwards. And that's why we also have our library. So whenever you miss a live, make sure that you go onto our library. Uh, we have got a library, that the IGTV library on Instagram. We have um, the Facebook video library. So just make sure that you're looking for Monday Live with Manuela. Um, and then there's all the, all the videos listed. We have, um, there's no library on LinkedIn. Um, however, there is a library on our YouTube channel. So we also have a YouTube channel and we post the recording onto our YouTube channel. So whatever you do, and also if you can't find something, then just message us. Yeah, send us a DM, a direct message, and then we'll send you the link. Okay, no problems. Um, so what is this? Um, can you get, Philip is asking, can you get, a, can you get with e-commerce degree from China? Hmm, interesting. Um, so again, so this is a question that I'm not going to be answer, not going to be able to answer. I can't say, oh yeah, there's that visa or there's there's this, you know, that you can do. So this is a question that we take into a consultation, and where we look at your qualifications, we look at your degree that you've done in in China, and we look at your work experience, and then we advise you what are your visa options. So Philip. Please book a paid consultation and then we can assist you and can answer your question and can explain what you can do and what business you can apply for. Okay. Um, can't see any other occupations. So, and I'm also, okay, 33 minutes live. Um, I'm going to wrap up. Um, what I want to say again is the prerequisite Okay, so a condition for the Dharma visa is you are sponsored by an employer. So you need to have an employer to sponsor you. Okay, so you can't do it on your own. And sometimes people think, oh gosh, you know, I don't have an employer and it's so hard. Yes, it's not easy. However, you know, everything starts with the first step. So I, for example... I was not in a Dharma, but I was on a different employer-sponsored visa. And I also, at the, at the start, was like, oh, God, who's going to give me a job? Who's going to, you know, not just a job, but also a sponsorship? I applied. I kept applying for jobs, and I went for interviews, and so on. So I did a lot of action. That's what it takes. You need to take action. They're not going to knock on your door and say, hey, do you want to work for us and we sponsor you and we pay you? No, you need to take initiative. Okay, so you need to go onto the Australian job boards. Seek, S-E-E-K dot com. Seek dot com is the most popular job board online and you can access from anywhere in the world. Look for jobs, apply for jobs, network. LinkedIn, for example, if you're on LinkedIn, then you know, follow our company. Aspire Immigration Australia is on the is on LinkedIn. Um, okay, so that's that about employer sponsorship. Now, lastly, I want to explain the Dharma, how it actually works. Yeah, um, which is probably really really good to know. So it's got four steps. So it's it's a really quite complex process. Um, and I do not recommend if you're doing this for the first time, especially as an employer, 
do not recommend to do this on your own. I definitely recommend to have a professional, like a migration agent, to assist you. Because it is very complex. So four steps. Step number one is seeking endorsement by the relevant authority. So for Far North Queensland, it is the Chamber of Commerce. Okay, so they are looking after the Far North Queensland Dharma. In the Northern Territory, it's a different authority. In South Australia, it's a different authority. So again, you know, like normal people don't know these things. We migration agents, because we do this every single day, this is our work, this is, you know, what we do. So we know that. So, okay, step number one, endorsement. Step number two, the labor agreement. Yeah, so once we have the endorsement, we apply for the labor agreement. Step number three, nomination. So once we have the labor agreement, we apply for the nomination. This is where the employer nominates the applicant in the relevant occupation. And step number four, last step, is the visa application. So this is where we apply for the visa for yourself and you can add your dependents. So you can add your partner, you can add your children, Later on, you can also sponsor other people. You can sponsor your parents, for example. Okay? You can also say, look, especially if you're offshore, um, you can also say, look, um, you know, if you have a family, you can either add everyone to the application that is possible, or you can also say, you know what, I'm going to go first and I get my family later. That's fine too. We can just also do the application with, you know, one person of the family and the rest comes later. So there's lots of different ways to do this. Okay, so um, again, I'll show you my notes. I kept it brief, 37 minutes. Um, I hope you found this valuable and helpful. Um, I would really appreciate, again, if you haven't done so, please give me a love heart, give me a like. Um, share this with people you find, you know, you, you, you think they might find that helpful. Um, and make sure that you vote for the next topic, okay? So we put up the recording on all the channels everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, is there any wells? I'm not sure, like we everywhere. And um, of course, I will be, will be live again next Monday. Also, if you haven't done so, join our Facebook group, okay? Make sure that you join our Facebook group, not just the page, but the group. The group has the same name, Ospire Immigration Australia. We have changed it now to a private group um, for several reasons. If you have been in the group for some time, you may have seen all these spam, spam comments about, I don't know, investing money and so on. We would never ever ask you to invest money as to into, you know, just pay us. Uh, no. So um, anyways, so to avoid all these scammers and to protect our community and protect you, um, we have now changed the settings of the group to private. Yeah, I was aiming to keep it public so, you know, um, people, it's easier for everyone to join and to communicate. However, you know, because there's just so many scammers, um, if you are a scammer and watching this, don't scam us. <laughs> um, so anyways, the Facebook group is private, you're protected. Um, yeah, I think it's also really good so that, you know, your identity is more protected. Um, and yeah, so join the Facebook group because I will be doing a Facebook um, Q&A in the group, only in the group. So this is the privilege for group members and you can ask me anything. Yeah, so there's no specific topic. You can just ask me your questions. Speaking of, I'm just going to do one more, um, you know, one more scroll through the comments just to make sure that I haven't missed anything important. Um, so there's a question on linked, sorry, on Instagram asking, hello, how much is approximate the offshore work visa apl applicant? Hmm, not sure if I understand that question correctly um, I assume the person is asking for the price of a work visa application and again that's a question I can't really answer because I need to know what visa exactly 
Yeah, so there's over 100 different visa types in the Australian immigration system. And I would need to know exactly which one and then I can say how much it is uh, as to in regards to the department fees because there is obviously different fees. There's our immigration agent fees, the service fees to you know do the whole process for you. And then there's also a fee from the department that they charge you for you know to lodge the visa and also to process it. Okay? Um, so um, Flavalent on Instagram, if you're still there, if you're listening, let me know exactly which visa and then we we'll can you know s send you the information about the price if that is what you're after. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, okay, so that's Instagram. I'm now looking on Facebook. Um, yeah, so Wilbert has asked for the booking link uh, and my assistant has posted that link. Um, I think... Yeah, no, I think I have answered everything. Okay, uh, 41 minutes. I'm going to say goodbye until next Monday. It's been great having you. Uh, thank you for all the love hearts and the likes and the comments and the engagement uh, and contribution. I really appreciate that. Um, I really enjoy doing these lives and they're even more fun um, when people are engaging. And you, you can see I actually talk more when there's more comments. Um, okay, wonderful. I'm going to go offline uh, and do some work. Um, and if you're watching the replay, please leave your comments in the comments box. Yeah, so get your comments and your questions. All right. Ciao, ciao. Um, where am I going? Yeah. And this one.